Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. In today's show, I got the latest training camp news. Football is finally, finally back. Also, what does that mean? Injuries. So here are some Raiders that missed training camp practice today. Trayvon Mullen battling a wrist injury. Quentin Bell, defensive end. Ronald Ollie, defensive tackle. Last chance you. A lot of you guys are asking me what's going on with him. He's not practicing. Now, here are some other names that aren't practicing. Antonio Brown. We'll get to it in a second. Jonathan Cooper. And then Eddie Vanderdose. He suffered a concussion. So, Eddie's not practicing today. So, let's talk a little bit more, though, about Antonio Brown. He said, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee when he came to practice on Friday in a hot air balloon. I knew when we went out and traded for Antonio Brown, there was going to be a lot of excitement. But the dude did not participate today in, in practice, even though he was cleared to do so. According to reports, the injury is minor. So Field Yates said the, the injury is very, very minor, and we shouldn't be worried about it. I'm not worried about an injury to Antonio Brown, but I am worried why this receiver isn't on the field. If he's a player who works the hardest, if he's a player who's talking all this much in the offseason, I want to see him on the field. I want to see 84 in black and silver and pads working with Derek Carr. Now, I'm not trying to freak out too much that Brown isn't practicing yet, but I want to see arguably our best offensive player on the field because the more chemistry he can build with Carr, ultimately the better. So is Antonio Brown the best wide receiver in the AFC West. I tweeted this out, and I'll be honest, this idea came from Tom, and a lot of you guys hated on Tom for the Chris Warren news. Give Tom a little bit more credit, because without Tom, you would have gotten any news. So is Antonio Brown the best wide receiver in the AFC West? Type 4 for Believe It Baby, or type 0 for Tuck Rule Tuck That. For everybody who types 0 for Tuck Rule Tuck That, you also have to submit a picture front and back of your credit card. Why was Chris Warren cut? This is a question that y'all been asking me for the last 24 hours. Also, you've been sending me the word lame in my DMs. My family had no idea what the heck was going on. They all thought you hated me. But I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to look you dead in the eyes and tell you why Chris Warren was cut. He didn't meet the Raiders' fitness expectations. Guess what? You come into camp overweight and you can't get under 260, that's what's going to happen. Chris Warren dealt with it in college, and he's dealing with it in the NFL. He didn't learn the Raiders' playbook. When you have a new offensive scheme going on, when you have a lot of other players in there competing for snaps, you need to understand the playbook. And simply, he wasn't a good enough blocker. They were worried about him not being able to protect Derek Carr. One of the reasons why he wasn't a running back at Texas, because he wasn't physical enough. It's a reason why he had zero chance of being a fullback. So yeah, when I released my 53 projections or 53-man projections, it's the reason why I didn't have Chris Warren. So ultimately, I'm not too surprised. Another question that you guys have been asking me, who the F is James Butler? Well, I'm going to tell you who James Butler is, okay? So... The Raiders, no more Warren. Signed James Butler yesterday, and he returns to the Raiders after spending a portion of his rookie season in 2018 on the team's practice squad. Butler was also on the team during this year's offseason program after signing as a reserve slash future free agent this past January. Now, James Butler, I think, is an interesting story. He had an interesting career in college. His first three years were all at Nevada, and then his last year was at Iowa, and now he didn't have as much success at Iowa. He averaged only 4.4 yards per carry, 9 games, 91 carries, only 1 touchdown. But when he was at Nevada, I've had a bunch of people send me his highlight tapes at Nevada. 607 carries, 3,313 yards, 5.5 yards per carry, and 27 touchdowns. My only thing with that, I don't really like highlight tapes because everybody looks good in a highlight tape. Hence, it's a highlight tape. So don't send me this stuff. James Butler is an interesting name to monitor, but he's not going to make a real impact, I think, on this Raiders running back depth chart. To be honest, I'd be shocked if he made the final 53 man. So you have Jacobs and Martin. I still think they are the main running backs to compete for that RB1 spot. Jalen Richard is our no doubt third down running back, I think, you're going to see him a lot in two-minute drills when we're really trying to play catch-up, maybe. Then you also have DeAndre Washington. 
Which, to be honest, as much as I gave Chris Warren a lot of crap, I'm actually surprised that they kept Washington over Warren. If anything, that should highlight how bad Warren looked. Then you have Keith Smith, who's battling with an injury. I actually expect him to get cut at fullback because Alec Ingold, according to all reports, has looked really really good. So I put this question up on the community poll on the Raiders report, and I like to get your guys' input. So did the Raiders make the wrong move in cutting Chris Warren? Because right now, 65% of you are typing N for no. And if I would ask this question last week, you probably would have the exact opposite answer, which is what I think is always funny to see what you guys put. So did the Raiders make the wrong move in cutting Chris Warren? I want you to type Y for yes or type N for no. Also, make sure you guys subscribe to the Oakland Raiders Report. I got to get to 20K by August 6th. That's when Hard Knocks starts. Currently, we are at 18,779. Yesterday was a really tough day for me watching Tom do the Raiders Report. And Tom did a great job. And I, the other thing, though, I thought it was really cool how much you guys got upset that I wasn't the one doing it. Now, for a lot of you, you asked me why I didn't do the Raiders report. I had to go home this weekend. Unfortunately, my grandfather is sick, and I had to spend time with him. But if there's one thing that I know, family time is important, and there's a reason why I want to get us to 20K, because I want to keep doing this show here at Chat Sports. Because I love Raider Nation. Y'all are like my second family. And if we don't get to 20K, I'm genuinely worried I'm going to lose my Raider Nation family. So, let's get to 20K by August 6th at Hard Knocks. Y'all know I love you. You know I, I love you, and I love doing the show. So, let's keep the Raider Nation rolling. Let's keep the Raiders report rolling. We got to get to 20K by August 6th. Raider Nation, much love. Let's go to the next news bit here. John Gruden, did he call out Cleveland Furl? Well, here's the thing. People are talking. So I'm not sure if y'all saw John Gruden's epic nightmare speech where he starts saying, everybody right now has dreams, man. I'm not really into dreams anymore. I'm into nightmares. Now, he keeps hyping up the players, but by the end of the speech, he says, in order to win a Super Bowl, you need to end people's dreams. Then he looks clear as day at Cleveland Furl and says, are you clear on that Furl? I think it's interesting. The reason why I think it's interesting is because about a month ago, there were reports that came out that the Raiders were worried that Furl wasn't mean enough. Wasn't mean enough to be able to compete in the NFL. Now, all offseason, he's been impressing a camp. And all offseason, he's been working with the first team. I expect him to be the starting right defensive end for the Oakland Raiders. Now, I'm looking at this two ways. Either A, you're calling out Furl for not being mean enough. Or B, you're looking at Furl and saying, set the tone. Set the tone for this defense because we need to be able to get after the quarterback in order to succeed in this division, in order to succeed in the NFL. And if we want to win a Super Bowl, Cleveland, go out there and make quarterbacks fear you. I want Cleveland Furl to be in Tom Brady's freaking nightmares. So do you like the fact that John Gruden singles out Furl? I want you to type one for yes. Or type 2 for no. I'm straight up typing my 1 for yes. When you are the first pick by a team in the NFL draft. Or by the Raiders. Any team. You're a fourth overall pick. You need to be singled out. When you're a player who has as much pedigree as Cleveland Furl did coming in. I love the fact that he's singled him out. It's the fact that John Gruden's not taking crap from anyone. And Furl set the tone for this Raiders defense. Let's get back to the Super Bowl. All right, next one coming in here is around Jonathan Abram, the third player that the Raiders drafted in this year's draft. He's impressing. He's impressed me, and he's not only impressed me, because realistically, I mean nothing compared to Brandon Marshall and Vontez Burfecht, who spoke very, very highly of Abram today. Burfecht said that Abram reminded him of a young Vontez Burfecht. Now, Vontez also joked around and said that he just talks a little bit more trash than him, which I kind of like. It's one of the reasons why we all were excited that Abram is going to be wearing that silver and black because the dude's going to bring the toughness. In fact, Vontez, think about this. Vontez Perfect had to tell Jonathan Abram to calm down a little bit at practice, to take a step back, that you're being a little bit too physical because the Raiders are a team. Think about that. Vontez Perfect is telling Jonathan Abram that, hey, man, you got to take it back a little bit. If he's being that physical in practice, I can't wait to see him lace it up on Mondays, Sundays, Thursdays. Strap on that chin strap, my man. 
keep laying people out. I think that's what the Raiders need to get back to. So, which Raider has impressed you the most in training camp? From all my reports that I've been hearing, Jonathan Abrams has been impressing a lot of people. Hunter Renfro has been impressing a lot of people. But if those two guys aren't on your list, who has impressed you the most throughout training camp? I want you to comment below if you're watching on YouTube and if you're watching on Facebook. Now, I want to give a special shout out to my dude, Keith. Keith and I, we got beers together in San Diego, and he also DM'd me because he's like, yo, Mitch, I heard about this, like, way I can get some swag. So he tweeted out, Mitch from Chat Sports and the Raiders Report, I want to thank you, bro. Have a great weekend. So we got him a whole bunch of Raiders swag, and if you guys want some Raiders swag, you better be listening. So turn up the volume if you're listening on your iPhones, and if you're just watching me, stay close here because I'm. the next thing I'm going to put up on screen is something... Even if you don't want swag, you're not going to want to miss. So who wants some Raiders swag? Get ready to slide in the DMs. So if you want some Raiders swag, you need to DM Nina, okay? Nina's combined and uh, joining me here at the Raiders Report. So DM Nina for some Raiders swag. Her IG's up on screen there. She's a Raiders fan. She wants to be able to hook you guys up. So DM Nina the word swag. And she's going to hook you up with some Raiders swag. Nina, much love. Also much love to our sports sponsor, my bookie. Go to chatsports.com slash Raiders. A lot of you guys are like, yo, how did he get that awesome swag? Because he signed up with my bookie. So promo code go Raiders for 100% deposit bonus. You want to bet on the Raiders making the playoffs? You want to bet on the Raiders winning the Super Bowl? Use my bookie, the best damn promo code out there. Use it. Go Raiders. All right. Another injury news here we got to get into. It's around Marcel Aitman. And I'm telling you right now, I wouldn't be too worried about it. So according to Paul Gutierrez, today at practice, Aitman had to get his hand checked after Eric Harris broke up a pass. From what it sounded like, Eric Harris made a hell of a play on the ball, slapped the ball out of Aitman's hands, and unfortunately then Aitman had to go off to the sideline where then he was then examined. Good news though, good news, good news is uh, Aitman got checked. Seemed like he was okay. He was catching passes on the sideline. It doesn't seem to be all that big of a deal. But I will say this. When you're fighting for a roster spot, every single snap counts. And I'm telling you right now, Marcel Aitman is still fighting for a roster spot. Another player who's been very impressive is Hunter Renfro. His ability to catch has been noticed very, very quickly. Because over the first two days of practice and training camp, he's made several nice catches. And I asked you guys, Hunter Renfro or LaMarcus Joyner a few weeks ago, and it was pretty split. And I was actually kind of surprised on the amount of people that said Hunter Renfro. But also according to reports, Hunter Renfro has actually been doing very, very well against LaMarcus Joyner. And Derek Carr and coaches, especially Greg Olson, have been very, very happy with Renfro on his ability. They don't care what he did at the Combine. This is a kid who simply gets open. Another guy who's been getting open a bunch is J.J. Nelson, and it's one of the main reasons why he was named Day 2 MVP by the coaches. He's been making incredible catches on 11-11 drills, and he's really opening things up for the offense. One of the biggest things that he's getting attention for, though, is even on the plays where he doesn't get the ball, on how much even defenders are saying, like, you just got to respect the speed. So the fact that these Raiders secondary players, who we all know, I think is probably one of our strongest points of our defense right now, is paying that much close attention to J.J. Nelson's speed. He's making big catches. He's awarded the day two MVP. I'm just saying, for Marcel Aitman, who's really still fighting for that spot, J.J. Nelson is one of the reasons why I put him in over Aitman in my 53-man projection. So let's play a game, okay? I know this is a little bit of the, you know, you got to do one, you got to marry one, you got to kill one. So we're going to have some fun here. Keep, trade, cut. Marcel Aitman, Hunter Renfro, J.J. Nelson. You have to keep one of them, you have to trade one of them, and you have to cut one of them. I can already hear you. Mitch, we're not going to trade any of them. I just want to play a game, okay? Let's just have some fun. Keep trade cut. Marcel Aitman, Hunter Renfro, J.J. Nelson. If you want to know what I would do, hit me up on IG or Twitter, at MitchellRens365, and make sure you guys subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Click that big red button, turn on notifications so you know exactly when I go live. Like tomorrow, Tuesday, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, you better be there. Raider Nation, what's going on? Is this the number one Raiders channel on YouTube? For Chucky Heads, believe it, baby. And if you haven't already, subscribe right here. I'm giving you Chucky Heads news, rumors, Raider Nation rumors. And look at this. I'm making your life easier. Check out my next video. Thanks for watching, and go Raiders.